Rooster Creek Quilting in Holt Summit, Missouri is your one-stop shop for all your quilting needs and more. Their specialties include great customer rapport to assist you with finding that perfect fabric, notion, pattern, pre-cuts, and embroidery supplies. Brewster Creek also offers professional long-arm quilting services and classes and much more. Don't wait for the rooster to crow. Visit Rooster Creek Quilting at Holt Summit Plaza, Holt Summit, Missouri. It's a great place to go for all your quilting needs. Welcome to JCTV's Quilting Inside and Out, where you get the scoop on the world of quilting. Our sponsor is Rooster Creek Quilt, or Rooster Creek Company of Holt Summit, Missouri, where you get all your quilting needs. Today is February 14th, 2018. It's uh, Valentine's Day, Ash Wednesday, and Mardi Gras is going on. We are coming from you at the state capitol. We're coming uh, in Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm your host, Kathleen Dake, and today is a, a great show filled with knowledgeable people. We'll be covering in the first half of the show special guests, Miss Cherie Hofelt of Warrenton, Missouri, and she'll share her quilting experiences. Then we'll be meeting Miss Ginger Beasley of Fulton, Missouri, and we'll uh, be enlightening you about her dedication to Ryan's Case for Smiles. In the second half hour, we'll get to meet Miss Deborah Rubles, who has an interesting background in the world of quilting, and will share her idea of quilt, cut less, quilt more. You'll be delighted with a demonstration of her cutting technique shown in her book, Quilter's Cutting Guide, The Sliding Rule Method. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Cherie Hofelt of Warrenton, Missouri. It's wonderful to have you as a guest here on Quilting Inside and Out. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, uh, Sherry, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Where do you come from and uh, what's your life like now? And uh, this is a good time to do a shout out to any of your friends or family. Oh, that'd be great. Um, well, I was born in Texas, uh, but because of my father's job, uh, we moved to Utah and to California. And then I moved to Missouri in 1975 when I was 21 years old. Uh, I transferred with McDonnell Douglas to their site, and um, I met my future husband. And we've been married uh, over 40 years uh, now. We have two children, and our daughter is an illustrator in uh, New York and she has two little boys, and our son lives in Seattle, or near Seattle, and he's an optometrist. Wow. And, uh, so, yeah, we're spread out, <laughs> still spread out. Yeah, I guess uh, big families kind of tend to cover a lot of acreage sometime. Um, so, Sherry, can you share with us about uh, how you were first inspired to get into quilting, and uh, what kind of things continue to keep you interested? I, I think as a child, it, it's often people say, oh, you know, I always sat under my grandmother's quilting frames. Well, my, both my grandmothers quilted, but uh, my maternal grandmother uh, passed in 1943, but she was uh, very prolific in quilting. And my father's mother, um, she made a, a wool quilt out of my father's and his six brothers wool coat and we had that quilt with us and now it's just a fond memory. Uh, a few years ago uh, my my aunts gave me two of my grandmother's uh, quilts which I dearly cherish but um, I just found quilting fascinating all of my life. My mother was not a quilter but uh, and now I, I get inspired by going to probably 
seven to ten quilt shows every year, and I, I just enjoy, enjoy the process of building and, and the fun of it. Really nice. It's great to have those heirloom quilts around to, to look at and to think of uh, fond memories. And uh, everybody has a favorite quilt, and so I was wondering if you could share the story about your favorite quilt, and you have it here, and we'll be showing a picture as we're talking about it. So yes, this is um, this is my uh, favorite quilt that I've made so far. It uh, uh, picks my family. Uh, there are four different sections that are divided by the flying geese or the triangles. Uh, there was a section for my mother. Uh, uh, the stitching in it was meandering. <laughs> she had dementia the last seven years of her life, so it, it kind of went with her uh, mental state. <laughs> um, there is, uh, I am in the center section, and I'm a maze that goes out to all the sections. Um, it's called flying in all directions. I feel like I'm sometimes pulled in each direction. Uh, there's a section for my husband. Uh, it has fans, but it the hills and valleys of marriage. And there is a quilted uh, St. Louis skyline for him. And in my daughter's section, there is a New York skyline. And uh, the quilting is the one-way streets of New York. And in my son's section, there is a skyline, a quilted skyline of Seattle, of course. And his quilting depicts the switchbacks in the mountains, which he loves to go skiing and hiking in. So that's, it, it just brings fond memories of, of every, every one of those people. Yeah. It's nice to have a quilt that tells so many sni nice stories about the history of your family. Yes. And then the flying geese pattern, uh, if you haven't been around quilts very much, it's mostly a just a triangle in front of a background. And uh, this is really nice. The color and everything is bright. Uh, and then there's a lot of people who enjoy quilting, but uh, there are also viewers that have never been around quilting very much. And they don't really know the definition of a quilter or what each one does. And if you could uh, define what quilter means and uh, because it has a few different definitions and uh, <laughs> Some quilters like to be considered artists and some don't want to be considered an artist. So could you talk about what it means to be a quilter? Um, a quilter to me is, uh, they like every process. They like the piecing of the top. Uh, they, may, they may or may not like to quilt the quilt. And then there are quilters who just like to quilt and don't like the piece. And I think these two people should get together and build quilts together. And uh, that, to me, any kind of the process of, of quilting will make a quilter, whether they do the whole, uh, what I call the A to Z process, because I like doing everything myself. Uh, quilter as a verb means uh, either hand quilting or machine quilting with a home-based sewing machine or a long arm machine, uh, you know, where they're machine quilting. Um, and I understand now a new terminology for me is a piecer because I hadn't heard that. Growing up and my grandma did quilts, that wasn't a word that we used. I always just heard quilter or that we were quilting. But, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. And I un understand that you've been doing quilting for uh, about 20 years, uh, started back in 1998. And uh, as a long arm quilter, can you describe the equipment and the techniques that you use? Yes. Um, well, actually, I've been quilting for 35 years, but I've been, I've owned a, a machine quilting business for 20 years. I've owned a, a long arm machine. And I'm gonna explain it, uh, how I have my business. Uh, I have a Gamel Vision, which is it's made in um, uh, Missouri, and a long arm machine rides, uh, the machine actually rides on rails uh, on a long table. I have a 12 foot table, there are rails, and the machine rides on it, and you can go horizontal, 
horizontal and vertical with this. So you can do curves and just do everything. And it's funny, the machine is very basic. It does not do the fancy stitches like a, a home base machine would. It, it just goes up and down. It's when you are what they call driving over your quilt, um, the quilt goes into basically a frame and the machine drives over the quilt and that's where you make the patterns. Now some long armors have uh, computers that have patterns on them and they select a pattern and it's automatically quilted. Uh, I'm what they call a um, freestyle or freehand quilter. I like to be working on the quilt myself. I, I'll use rulers or or whatever it takes to make the pattern, or I'll even just do something out of my head and, and um, that may go along with that quilt. I'll try different um, types of quilting. And that's always fun. I, I call it, you know, uh, basically painting with thread. Nice. Uh, so uh, if somebody wants to uh, learn quilting, I understand that you give lectures and do workshops and that you're an active member of the Missouri State uh, Quilters Guild mm -hmm. and also uh, Stitch in Time Quilt Guild right there in Warrington, Missouri. Can you say something about those two guilds? Oh, I'd love to. Um, they've, they've both been a part of my life for over 25 years now. And uh, going to the, uh, the State Guild really, uh, it was just so exciting because you're meeting people from around the state. Even We even have members that are out of state, but they still enjoy coming uh, to our retreats. We have uh, the State Guild, we have two retreats twice a year in the spring and the fall. And uh, actually I just finished uh, uh, co-chairing the fall retreat. And we have it here in Jeff City at the Plaza for three days. And it's just a wonderful time. We have a guest speaker. Uh, we have six to 10 uh, teachers that you can do quilting classes. Uh, we do games. The food is always great, of course. And you just eat, sleep, and drink quilting all the, you know, for three solid days. Um, the spring meeting is, which will be held at the Drury Inn uh, in uh, St. Charles this year. Um, uh, I think it's the first weekend of April. Uh, we, we have a guest speaker, uh, Deborah Rubles, which I understand she's going to be a guest um, tonight, today. Um, and that's always fun that we get to sew what we want. You know, it's wonderful. We stay the night and just get up and sew and eat and sew some more. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, yes. can you share your contact information so people can get uh, in touch with you? I understand uh, it's a lot by word of mouth. Yes. But uh, a few people watch this and they may be contacting you if you can do that. Well, I'm actually probably the easiest uh, because it's hard spelling my name. Uh, but the easiest way to get a hold of me is through the Missouri State Quilters Guild. And it's msqg.org. And you can find a lot of information on there. You can find other teachers, um, um, just uh, people who give lectures, teach, quilt. Um, just a, it's, it's a fun, actually it's very fun to go on and look at the, at the website. So I, rec I recommend that because my, my name's in the uh, worker bee section. <laughs> Well, great, Sherry. It's, it's been really my pleasure to have you here on Quilting Inside and Out, and thanks for making it a learning and informational experience for us all. Yeah. Um, after the break, we'll meet Miss Ginger Beasley, joining us to share about Ryan's case for Smiles Foundation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. 
Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Laughing Baby, brought to you by Children's Trust Fund of Missouri. Strong families, safe kids. Do you like this top? It's so gay. Really? Yeah, it's totally gay. You know, you really shouldn't say that. Say what? Well, say that something's gay when you mean it's bad. It's insulting. What if every time something was bad, everybody said, oh, that so girl wearing a skirt as a top? Oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Those are cute jeans, though. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Hello, and uh, welcome back to Quilting Inside and Out. For our next interview, we now visit with our second guest, uh, and she is Ginger Beasley from Fulton, Missouri. Welcome to Quilting Inside and Out, Miss Beasley. Thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Oh, well, you're welcome. And uh, also, uh, Ginger, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, some highlights of your life? I can. I was born in Fulton, but I didn't live here really until 10 years ago. I uh, grew up in northwestern Montana and then came back to Fayette to go to college, Central Methodist, yay. And uh, then went uh, to Seattle, where I lived for 40 years. And then after I retired and I got tired of the city life, I moved to Fulton. So here I am. That's wonderful. And uh, can you uh, share with us about being a, a dedicated quilter? Uh, tell us more about your experiences and, and how quilting has affected your life uh, and what inspires you. Well, I love quilts. I love making them. I love having them around my house, not only on the bed, but on the walls and over the sofa. Um, quilts in my house when I was growing up were functional. They were not folded up and put away in a cedar chest. They were on our beds. And I can still picture my mother and my grandmother making quilts. And so it was just kind of a natural thing that I fell into. You, you learn to sew needle and thread, and it's an easy transition to making a quilt. So I think my first quilt was when I was 12 years old. I made a bow tie quilt. Uh, you quilters will know that pattern. And a lady that lived in our town quilted it for me. I still have it. Um, and I was so proud of that quilt that I had made. Quilts were scrappy for the most part because uh, we didn't have the money to go out and buy fabric, so we used whatever was left over from another project, or maybe uh, an apron that was worn in some places but had some good spots too. I think my grandmother would roll over in her grave if she knew what fabric costs these days. <laughs> uh, yes, I know my grandmother used to uh, be able to get some cast-offs from a factory nearby, Ooh, uh, nice. little bitty quilt pieces, and she made quilts from that also. So mm -hmm. back then, we got fabric from wherever we could. That's right. Yes, and, and so uh, <clears throat> we're actually here today to talk about a very important foundation called Ryan's Case for Smiles. Now, since this is a quilting show, I thought it was about some kind of quilts, but as you'll see, it's about pillowcases and they're helping to make kids feel much better when they're sick and in the hospital. And if you could share with us about that. I would love to. You know how when you're passionate about something, it's easy to share. Um, my, grand, my grandmother, excuse me, Kathy, my daughter, uh, Kathy had taken a class in Boise and she asked me if I knew about Case for Smiles. It was one that was given at a quilt shop and she likes to sew and she's made numerous quilts. So she attended this with her friend, and then she shared the idea with me. I'd never heard of it before, and this was in 2011. So I got busy on the internet and tried to find out about uh, Ryan's Case for Smiles, although at that time it was called Conquer Cancer. Some people might recognize that name more than Ryan's Case for Smiles. Um, so that piqued my interest. There was not a quilt, uh, excuse me, a chapter in our area in mid-Missouri, and so I decided I would start uh, with my first workshop, which I uh, held at our church in town, 
and it just grew from there. We have made, our chapter has made over 17,000 pillowcases. Wow. And we deliver to probably 20 facilities. In St. Louis, they have a big chapter and they deliver to two or three big hospitals. Well, there are so many wonderful women and men and children in mid-Missouri that want to make these pillowcases that we have to reach way out to find hospitals that need pillowcases. So we deliver up to Kirksville and Hannibal and down to Cape and up to Moberly and Audrain and Jeff City and of course Columbia. We have four facilities over there that we deliver to and a big Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City. So uh, those pillowcases keep coming in to my garage and I sort them and they go out and it's really fun. It's just wonderful that we could do that. That's great. A lot of people don't understand sometimes what it takes as far as volunteers to do something this uh, big and how many people and, and things that are involved in getting stuff like this done. And if you could, um, maybe somebody would like to assist you with that. Uh, maybe they would like to quilt some pillowcases. Uh, maybe they would like to do some quilting themselves. Can you uh, share what might inspire them or how they can access uh, the Ryan's Case for Smiles? Well, yes, and I will be happy to show you. Excuse me for a second here. Um, I'm glad I didn't have it upside down. <laughs> uh, we do have a website. It's called caseforsmiles.org. And it is a wonderful website. There's a video on there that you can watch. And it tells what you can do if you want to help, how to donate, how to do. We need fabric donations. We need monetary donations. I'm getting real good at going around to different stores and asking for donations to help support our habit. Um, our quilting shops in the local area are very dedicated to helping us uh, have workshops there and they donate extra fabric when they have it. So we just feel like it's been a very supported cause throughout the whole area of mid Missouri. And I might say that we've given workshops in some interesting places. Uh, I gave one at the men's prison here a couple of years ago. We've had them at uh, schools, libraries, churches. Uh, we did one at the winery in Holt Summit a couple of months ago. Um, we have school groups, sewing clubs that make pillowcases for us. So it's just something that almost like throwing the rock in the, the pond. The ripples have gone out and we have people all over. I just last week received a box of pillowcases that a lady in Illinois had made and uh, she had picked up a brochure. I believe you have one of those for us. And uh, she had picked it up at the hospital. We like to have those out so that parents can pick them up and know where the pillowcases came from. And she went home and made pillowcases. It took her a year, but she sent me 25 pillowcases. So wow. I was delighted. That's a lot. And I see that you've got some here with you. There's oh. such a huge variety and they're so oh. colorful. I can see how kids would be comforted by something like that. Uh, you've got one with baseballs and some yep. hearts, uh, stripes, just a lot of Let's different see. colors. And we do the holidays too. This is a Valentine one, which they went out already, but I had that one left over. Uh, and St. Patrick's Day, the nurses especially like the uh, holiday ones. They get real excited about it. And, and they, they say that not just the child benefits from it, but it also serves as a distraction if the child's having some kind of unpleasant procedure in bed. The doctor may come in and say, oh, what's this on your pillowcase? Is that SpongeBob or My Little Princess? And so it kind of distracts the child from what they're doing at the time, the procedure, so as well as bring a bright smile. We're not medical people, but we like to think that we're helping the children feel better to heal better. That's great. And uh, it's like you said, the ripple is just going out all over yes. the place. And it's so great that people can actually send in uh, material or anything that they can to contribute to the cause, even a finished pillowcase. Um, so also people are interested. You mentioned a workshop. And so 
what other kinds of workshops and do you do lectures and then uh, how would people contact you if they want to go to one of your uh, your personal well workshops? on the website it tells um, there's a tab at the top and it says how to donate or find out more I think it says and you drop down and you can get the listings by state and uh, go to Missouri and we are listed as Columbia I don't know why but just because I guess our first pillowcases went over there. But anyway, and that has my name and my uh, email on it. So contact me, and uh, if you want to get on our newsletter, that's the best way to find out what we're doing. But we have workshops all the time. Just uh, fun getting together, and these wonderful women come and give up an afternoon or evening, and so, so, so. That's great. And so then if somebody wants to contribute, mm -hmm. what kind of material? Is there a specific kind, like 100% mm -hmm. cotton, or do you not do like certain other kinds? I'm glad you asked that. Um, it needs to be 100% cotton, and we recommend that the material be pre-washed before you cut the pillowcase because material shrinks. And if you make a pillowcase and one and sew it and then wash it afterwards maybe the band will shrink more than the border or the excuse me the body mm -hmm. or vice versa and then you have kind of a puckery uh, pillowcase so we like to have you do uh, the washing beforehand and it's very important that you use non-scented detergent we can't uh, chance having any allergic reaction to the right. children that we're trying to make them feel better not make them sick uh, and no dryer sheets because they're scented mm -hmm. and so uh, that would be a precautionary. The website will give you specific directions and sizes. We try to keep them pretty much regulated sizes for the hospital. So. Oh, that's great to have all that information. Yes, and so then, go to the website, yes, caseforsmiles.org. And then also I want to thank you for bringing in these great pillowcases. We'll have some uh, on the screen as people uh, watch the show and as we talk about them. Uh, it's been very informative and I hope people can take the time to uh, maybe make something or send in supplies. Um, and I hope that uh, Ryan's case for smiles continues on and helps a lot of young children. I, I know what it's like to be in the hospital when you're young, even at 13, I remember being in the hospital and having an IV and, and my big focus was I was watching the TV, I think Little House on the Prairie was on, so oh. it wasn't anything I could hold on to, but it was a distraction and these just make it even better to sit there and look at a design or a pattern like that. Thank you. Uh, well, thanks so much for You're being welcome. here with us. Thank I you. really enjoyed all the information and I'm sure our viewers did too. Thank you so much, and you're, appreciate you're, it. You're welcome. Being able to share. So, uh, so if you have any uh, news about quilting, you can uh, contact 573-645-4507, uh, and uh, that number belongs to Rick J. And also, you can contact Rooster Creek Company. Their phone number is 573-649. 4789 and Rooster Creek is up in Holt Summit, Missouri. It's a great place. Uh, you can uh, send in your information and we can get the scoop on what's happening and relay it onto the program. So next we meet with Miss Deborah Rubles, who is uh, well noted in the world of quilting with her uh, technique to cut lists and to quilt more, which will surely inspire you. Ta stay right there and we'll be right back. There. There's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> Find
of yours at discovertheforest.org. By purchasing a Children's Trust Fund license plate, you're helping to prevent child abuse and neglect in Missouri. Show your hands and get your license to care. Children's Trust Fund. Strong families. Safe kids. My mama always said, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're gonna get. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my. I could have been a contender. Then let me take that to your cock. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Kathleen Dake, your co-host here on Quilting Inside and Out. We now go to see Deborah Rubles, who will demonstrate Quilter's Cutting Guide technique. And it's a very interesting technique. So uh, welcome to the show, Ms. Rubles. Um, I'm uh, glad that you're here to share your technique with us. And could you tell us a little bit about your background, uh, how you got started in quilting, and, and the things that you uh, aspire to do as a quilter? Yes, Kat, yes. Um, I actually grew up in Kentucky, and I was the oldest girl in a family of 10, five girls and five boys. And we did not have any quilts when I was growing up. In fact, I did not even know what a quilt was. Um, and I stumbled um, upon a quilt store in, about 20 years ago. And I was looking for some handwork to do because it was a very stressful time in my life and someone told me to go to this quilt store. Anyway, I walked in and saw all these beautiful quilts and just fell in love with the store, the owner, everything. Uh, and at that time, I did not even know what a rotary cutter was, what a quilting ruler was, or anything. I mean, I was definitely a beginner. But I started, I signed up for a class in October. By December, I owned a sewing machine, and I've been quilting ever since. That's wonderful. Um, can you uh, share with us a little bit more about the types of quilt and the type of quilting that you actually do? Yes, um, at the very beginning, um, now, I'm, I'm pretty much of a hard charger, uh, like to get things done. And when I first started quilting, I took on some, a lot of handwork quilts. Uh, and the handwork is where we actually do applique, where you cut out pieces of fabric and then you sew them on top of pieces of fabric. And um, I did several of those. And then after the first year or two, I kind of backed off and went into different uh, types of quilt patterns like log cabin blocks and uh, flying geese and other things. Um, and then for the past five years though, I have really been interested again back into the applique and working with different um, material. I actually like working with wool, uh, so I'll do some cut out wool pieces and fuse them onto cotton pieces and then you sew around them. So that's been what I've been working, the type of quilting that I have been working on for the past couple of years. Oh, nice. Now, when you yeah. say you fuse them together, I know that you can actually felt cotton, silk, and wool, and other uh, natural fabrics. Uh, do you felt them, or do you fuse them with a certain other, like, fusing material? No, no, most of the wool that I buy from the quilt stores is already felted. Okay. And so, but you have to apply an adhesive. Okay. Uh, it's called fusible web, but there is an adhesive that you can apply to the wool so that it will then fuse onto your cotton material. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Now, so how do you describe yourself? What describes yourself as a quilter? And maybe uh, help our viewers see uh, kind of what it means to be a quilter. Is it, is, I mean, does it include artistic pieces? Do you go mostly for handmade? Do you use uh, like uh, any of the quilting machines? Well, um, honestly, when, when I grew up, when I was in high school, I always thought about being an art teacher. Okay, that didn't happen. But I consider myself now an art teacher, but I'm teaching quilt art. Um, and actually, because the quilts that I like to do, I mean, I like to do all aspects of quilting.
from going into the shop or picking out the fabrics, picking out the pattern that you're going that I'm going to use, picking out the colors. I mean, that's all artistic uh, parts of it, uh, and then putting the quilt together. But the best part is giving it, giving it to um, a family, giving it to a relative, giving it to a stranger. Um, that is one of the best parts of quilting that I love. Oh, so. yes, that sounds nice. I, I enjoy going down to uh, Rooster Quee Creek, uh, Rooster Creek and Holt Summit. It's mm -hmm. near where I live, and I like to go look at the, the quilting material, and uh, I do sew a little bit, and I get lost in it. The, it's such a variety, and there's so many different patterns, and it's it's so nice to see a little bit of a pattern for everybody. Uh, what are some of your favorite colors and patterns? Well, um, I'd have to say that I tend to go towards greens and browns and oranges. Uh, if you look at my fabric stash at home, uh, there will be a lot of the orange and greens, earth tones. But also I like to go on the wild side. I like the uh, bright colors uh, a lot. Um, so, and as far as a favorite pattern, you know, as I think I'm like almost any quilter, you walk in and you see a beautiful piece of artwork, a quilt hanging someplace, or our friend just showed you one that she completed, and then you just, uh, you like it so much, you say, oh, where'd you get that pattern? And then I get the pattern, and then we go make it, and then you find your own colors and so on. It's so. especially nice if you know the story behind quilts. And uh, also, then I understand that uh, you do workshops, uh, do you teach, and do you travel? I, I heard that you travel some uh, for your uh, uh, quilter's cutting uh, edge. Yes, well actually oh, what, I, what I have found over the years is, is that one thing that quilters do not like to do too much is cut out fabric. And uh, I've always liked to cut out fabric. And I learned a certain technique of cutting out fabric uh, about 15 years, well, really within the first two years that I started quilting. Someone showed me this technique. I always looked for a book on that technique, could not find one. So I finally decided about, really about four or five years ago, I decided I'm gonna do a book myself. So I was teaching classes um, on the cutting technique and um, I did not have a book at that time and the students would come back about a couple of weeks later and ask me do you have a book with this or do you have instructions or something I said no so I finally worked with a graphic designer and put together a book and it was just printed in May of last year May of 2017 and it was printed in by this wonderful printing company in Springfield Missouri so I have been actually out now going to different quilt shows, uh, promoting my book and promoting the cutting technique. Because one thing uh, about quilters, we like to share what we do and we like to share what we know. Uh, and what I have found is, is that um, since quilters do not, many quilters do not like to cut out fabric, I have found that, okay, if you learn this technique, you'll soon be cutting less and quilting more because this technique takes about half the time. It saves some steps of the way that many quilters cut. So um, I've had, um, I, I was just in a uh, quilt show in Jefferson, Texas, and I have to share this just for a minute because after I did my demonstration, uh, the lady who I was demonstrating to, she stood there and she looked at me and she says, wow, I feel like I've been at a magic show. And I said, yes, that's what it's all about because they're amazed that they haven't seen this cut, cutting technique and they want to learn it. So, so I'm willing to teach it to them. That just uh, yeah. sounds really terrific about the, the quilter's uh, cutting guide. And uh, I'm really looking forward to your demonstration. So if people want to find out about your book, do you have contact information, like a website or something, that you would like to share with them? Yes. Um, the name of my website is the same name of the book, and the name of the book is Quilter's Cutting Guide. So my website is www.quilterscuttingguide.com. Um, and on the website, I do have a video tutorial, or tutorial video, uh, so that, you know, uh, 
We learn in different ways. If you learn by reading and looking at pictures, that's in my book. But if you learn more by actually watching someone do it, then you can watch me again uh, on my uh, video that's on my website and also on YouTube. So. That's really great. And, yeah. and for some of our viewers who uh, really don't know about uh, books and what it takes to do a book, could you maybe explain in the next minute or so what you had to go through and how long it took you to get your book together? Yes, I'll be glad to. Um, I try to, to summarize it. If you, uh, anyone can write a book. It's, it's, um, it's a matter of then getting the finance, financial support to get it printed. Um, and it's a matter of, you know, working with a graphic designer or someone to help you edit your book. Uh, but then you still have to go to the bank and borrow the money uh, or, you know, somehow um, obtain the money and the finances and everything to uh, actually get it printed. So that's what I found. Um, and, and also, I, I've been retired. I haven't been working for the past um, really eight years. And uh, I have found now that I've had to go back to work because um, I went to promote my book, uh, but it is a work of joy now. I just, uh, I really enjoy uh, doing it. I enjoy showing it to people. I enjoy seeing their expressions. And the thing is, is that the book is for beginners and experienced quilters. It's for beginners, beginners, um, you know, who are still new at learning how to, they haven't, Beginners have not, um, they haven't got the old habits, as I call them, or bad habits. I mean, we all have our bad habits and our good habits, you know. Um, but what I found is, is that uh, they learn it my, this way to start with, and then the experienced quilters, though, they can appreciate it because they can appreciate what a difference it is and how much time it does save. That's really wonderful. Now, when we return, we'll uh, have a special treat today. Deborah's going to show her technique to us with a, a demonstration here. And uh, I'd like to once again say thanks to our sponsor, Rooster Creek Company in Holt Summit, Missouri. Uh, so we'll come back and you'll be uh, finding out how to save time with Deborah's uh, technique. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Deborah Rubles and I live in Lebanon, Missouri. And I've written a book called The Quilter's Cutting Guide. And this book was just printed in May of 2017. And it shows a cutting technique that will soon have you cutting less and quilting more. And today I'm gonna to give you a short demonstration about the book, how the book works. Um, I put it in spiral ring because the plan is, is that it's a cutting tool, not just a book. Uh, you would open it up to the page you need, open it up, put it at the top of your cutting mat, and then you would do your cutting. So before we do our cutting, or before I sh do the demonstration, I want to show you how I prepare my fabric. Because part of cutting out fabric is getting organized and getting prepared to cut the fabric. And if you take the few extra minutes that it involves, then you will be uh, getting your cutting done much faster. 
And the first book in, excuse me, the first chapter in the book actually talks about preparing your fabric. So I'm going to use this fabric today. And this fabric is cut, is uh, folded in half, like you, when you buy it at the fabric store. And then I just fold it in half again. So when you cut through this fabric, we're cutting through four layers of fabric. I also, I'm right-handed, so I fold in the fabric from the right-hand side. And I like doing this because this keeps the fabric much more manageable, uh, easier to cut. I don't like cutting all those big pieces where you have to stretch it all out on your cutting mat. Um, so my fabric has been pressed and folded. Now the first thing we have to do is we have to get the square edge or that straight edge to cut from. I use the two ruler method. And this again is a method that um, I would say few quilters actually use to square their fabric. And this is explained in chapter two of my book of how to square the fabric uh, with two rulers. So I have two rulers. I have a small one and a big one. And the big one's a 15 inch square. The small one is a six inch by 12 inch uh, rectangle. And what I'll do is, is that I will line up the small, a, a dark line of the small ruler. So I talk about either the one inch line or the two inch line. I will line one of those dark lines up on the fold of the fabric. And that's one thing I forgot to tell you is, is that when you put your fabric on the cutting mat, you always want to make sure that the fold is at your belly. The fold's at your belly. Uh, so now to square it, I'm going to line up a dark line of the small ruler on the fold. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to pick this one up and bring it over, and then I'm going to cut. And I have found that using the two rulers, to square your fabric, it's faster, it's quick. Uh, you don't have to pick up the fabric and turn it around. You don't have to pick up your cutting mat, nor do you have to walk around the table. Because I've seen that in all aspects of when, when the ladies are getting their square edge. They do a little bit of all of it. But anyway, it's a, just a different technique and you can learn it if you're willing to try something different. So let's say now we have our fabric square Let's say we have to cut some binding strips. And I think um, I like using two and a half inch strips uh, for my binding. And I think that's a, a common measurement that most quilters like to use. So let's say we need five strips of two and a half inch binding. So the way the book works, this is when you now go to the quilter's cutting guide. You will open it up, and if you notice, there's tabs on the book. So you go to the two inch tab, you go the, open that page, and then you can turn the pages till you find two and a half inches up at the top. This is where I've done the math for you, tried to make it as easy as possible. So, and I skipped it. There's the two and one half inch page. And then I usually, like I said, open it up, put the top of my cutting mat. Uh, I made these numbers big so that I can see the numbers clearly as I'm cutting. Um, and I, you see three columns. And, the book consists of these charts and five chapters of instructions at the beginning. But the main thing, the main purpose of the whole book is to provide these charts for you where I've done the math for you. So you have three columns of numbers. The first column is the number of strips needed. And what did I say? We said we needed five. So you go down, you find the number five. And then you go across and it says cut on 12 and a half inches. And what that means is that's where we're going to start cutting. And this is cut on 12 and a half. So we're actually going to find 12 and a half inches on our big ruler. And this is why it's important to have a 15 inch square ruler too. Uh, so we find the 12 and a half inch measurement mark on the ruler and we're gonna line that up with that straight edge. At the same time, I'm looking down and I'll line a dark line up in that fold at the bottom. Because all quilters know you need two points to have a straight cut. So this is a straight point. This is a straight or point. Um, I've got a straight line there, straight line there, and then I'm going to hold the ruler and I'm going to cut. So that's my first cut. Now the next thing is, all you do is just go down the chart. So the next number going down the chart is 10, and you simply slide the ruler over. That's why I call it the sliding ruler method. You slide the ruler over to the 10. So the 10 on the ruler 
is now lined up with that straight edge and also have a line on the fold. And then you cut. Next number is seven and a half. Uh, slide it over and you put the seven and a half on that straight edge and you cut. Next number is five. Slide it over and cut. And the last number at the bottom is our two and a half inch strip. So what I have done is I have just cut my five strips in no time. While some of you may still be uh, squaring up your fabric, but I've got my five strips done. Now, this is for binding. Now, just to carry this forward a little bit more, you know how a lot of your patterns call for a whole bunch of two and a half inch squares. So this last column, this third column, is what I call a bonus column. And this is the number of squares that you need or you will get out of the strips you cut. You know, let's say you have a pattern that tells you that you need to cut 48 two and a half inch squares. So in this column, you would go down and find the number 48 or the number closest to it. So here's 48, and that tells you that you need three strips two and a half inches wide to get 48 two and a half inch squares. Okay, so we need three strips. And let me show you how we're going to cut those because, again, we want to get our cutting done so that we can go start sewing or do more fun things. So I'm going to pull two of these off, and I have three strips left. And all I'll do is, is swing them around and line them up on a line on my cutting mat. So there's one. There's my second one. Remember, we cut three to get our 48. So there's my three. You need to square it, so we're going to square on the left side. Hold it, and there's my straight edge. Now, we're going to cut these into two and a half inch squares. So this fabric is approximately 10 and a half inches wide. So you look at the big numbers to see where you can start cutting at, and you want to cut on the number that's closest to 10 and a half inches. So we'll go down, we're going to start cutting on 10. And that means that we're going to find the 10 on the ruler and line it up on that straight edge. And also I'm lining a line up at the bottom and then we cut. Then you go down the chart and next number is seven and a half. So slide the ruler over, put the seven and a half on that straight edge and cut. The next number is five, slide the ruler over on the five and cut. And the last one is two and a half inches. So what I just did was cut three two and a half inch strips into 48 squares. And if you don't believe me, look, there's my 48 squares. Okay, they're all, they were, four, remember we're cutting through four layers at a time. So there's our 48 squares. So that's what the book is all about. Um, as I said earlier, the book includes, it just has five chapters at the front of instructions. And the instructions include uh, instructions for left-handed and right-handed because of course if you're left-handed you're holding the rulers and the rotary cutter differently so I have pictures showing you of how and where to cut and how to hold the rulers and so on and then I have a couple more chapters with the pictures and then the rest of the book is charts uh, I have a website www.quilterscuttingguide and on that website you can actually purchase my book uh, there's also a tutorial video there uh, on it. So if you learn from reading the book, you can read it, or you can watch me again do the demo. That's Deborah Rubles. I'm at Lebanon, Missouri with the Quilter's Cutting Guide. Thank, Thank you. you. Sparky loves the Children's Trust Fund because Sparky loves kids and he wants you to help CTF by donating a portion of your tax fund. <laughs> Look for the handprints on your tax form to donate. Sorry Sparky, they're handprints, not paw prints. Miss Rubles, that was a great demonstration. Welcome back everyone to uh, Quilting Inside and Out. That was uh, Deborah Rubles showing us about Quilter's Cutting Guide. 
uh, and I'm sure some of our viewers that do quilting are interested in a little bit about her also, uh, her personal background, and also make sure to say hi to uh, maybe your favorite person. <laughs> okay, well, um, I live in Lebanon, Missouri, and I'm actually what some, many people call transplants because I grew up in Kentucky, and the Army is what brought me to Missouri. Um, the Army brought me to Missouri in, um, in the early 70s, where I met my husband, where my daughter was born. And then 20 years later, when we were done traveling with the Army, we decided to live in Missouri. Uh, we've always loved, and when we first came to Missouri, we loved it, we've loved it since, and Missouri is now my home. Um, but my husband, uh, he actually, he passed away in 2008 after fighting a hard battle with cancer. But about two years after that, I met this, uh, a true Missourian, uh, a man who grew up in Lebanon, Missouri. And uh, we've now been married for eight years. So it's been a wonderful time and Missouri has been, um, I mean, it's my hometown, it's my home state now and it's brought me many treasures and everything. And I did want to give a shout out, if I may. Sure, go right uh, ahead. Happy Valentine's Day, Mr. Rubles. That's it. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I really want to thank you personally, and I can't wait to try this technique myself. Uh, here on Quilting Inside and Out, we're just so glad that you could come and show us how to do that. Um, it's been informational, and uh, I'm looking forward to even checking out your book, too. All right. <laughs> so uh, now the scoop on uh, World of Quilting. Uh, the Hannibal Peacemakers Quilt Guild is having their next show, Around the Block. It's on Friday, April the 6th, and Saturday, April the 7th. The Rooster Creek Quilt Show is going to be in Holt Summit, Missouri, on a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, July 12th, 13th and 14th. Also, the Peacemakers of Springfield, Missouri have dates for a quilt show, and it is on September 27th through the 29th of this year. Cape Girardeau, Missouri will host their quilt show on September 29th and 30th. So please contact Rooster Creek Company in Holt Summit. Their phone number is 573-694-4789. Four seven eight nine. Once again, that number is five seven three six nine four four seven eight nine. Let them know the scoop so we can pass the information along and bring it to you here on Quilting Inside and Out. So thanks to JCTV producer Gloria Inlow and the JCTV XS staff and crew. A big thank you to everyone joining us here on JCTV. Look for more episodes here at JCTV and on YouTube. Uh, all you have to do is search for JCTV and watch their videos. It's all right here on JCTV. I'm Kathleen Dake, and I'll see you next time on Quilting Inside and Out. Rooster Creek Quilting in Holt Summit, Missouri is your one-stop shop for all your quilting needs and more. Their specialties include great customer rapport to assist you with finding that perfect fabric, notion, pattern, pre-cuts, and embroidery supplies. Rooster Creek also offers professional long-arm quilting services and classes and much more. Don't wait for the rooster to crow. Visit Rooster Creek Quilting at Holt Summit Plaza Holt Summit, Missouri. It's a great place to go for all your quilting needs.